Welcome to another stair building education series. Let's go ahead and jump right into it with our first video. In this video, I will provide you with an easy method for forming a small set of concrete stairs. And in my opinion, this is the easiest possible method for those of you who are looking for an easy method. And our stairway will have seven and a half inch risers. So we're going to be using two by eights for the boards and stakes. You can usually pick up at your local lumber yard or make these yourself. And of course, we're going to have some stakes going into the ground and then some side pieces here. But you can always just use additional stakes here also if you're looking for additional structural support to keep this thing from moving. And of course, you can always drive more stakes into the ground or even use less of them if that's going to work for you. And our stairway is going to be 36 inches wide and our steps will be 11 inches deep. And of course I will provide you with all of the measurements for the boards as we go along that you're going to be using for this particular stairway. Now keep in mind that this might not work for your project and that all of the pieces might need to be modified to work for your project. So let's go ahead and get started with building our first frame. And you can simply build this frame right here, the two by eights that you cut, set it on top of a flat surface and then assemble it and then bring it into place. And what I would advise doing in a situation like this would be to drive these stakes in first and then level the front or side of the stairway first. So for example, if I level this side of the stairway first, then I can put a couple of screws in here to temporarily hold it in place and then go to the front and then level this so you're going to have this one here will already be level and then you're going to level this piece here and then you'll level this one here so you need to kind of work your way around you can level the front one and then the two sides or level one of the sides and then work your way around the perimeter until everything is level and not only does it need to be level the measurements need to be the same from the front to the back and that won't be too difficult to do you're just going to measure this before you drive the stakes into the ground and if it was me what i would do like i said is start in the front drive a couple of stakes into the ground and then level it and then put one screw in this stake one screw in this stake and then square one of the sides so let's just say i'm going to take a framing square and make sure that this side is square then i can drive a stake into the ground, level it, and then put one screw into this stake into the form board here. And then simply measure over from here to here, and then drive this stake into the ground, and then put a screw into the form board through the stake after you have leveled it. And then take the level and work your way around and double check that everything is level. And then after you're satisfied with it being level, you can take the next section and position it where it goes and then firmly attach it to the stakes with some screws or nails. And of course, that'll be on both sides. And you won't need to level this as long as you level the bottom boards and the 2x8 is the same size. Then you can position the last piece and attach it to the side pieces. And of course you will do that on both sides. Now another thing I want to point out here is that you might be able to drive a nail or a screw at an angle to firmly attach this board to this one here. And of course you could do that on all of the necessary sections to prevent this from moving. Or you can grab another board and attach it like we did here to create a nice connection here. Now you won't need to do this if you're satisfied with the sections that they are not going to be moving when you are pouring the concrete. And of course, you can drive more stakes into the ground, like I said. And these boards here can be stakes just like this one here. And of course, you can move this one over or drive three of them in here. One, two, three. Because the last thing you want to do is have the form boards move while you're pouring your concrete and finishing your stairway. 
Here is an answer to a question I received yesterday. I made a video on how to form a simple set of stairs like this, and I will put a link at the end of the video to the instructions for forming this type of stairway. Now, the question that was asked was a good one, and that was, what about rebar? And for a set of stairs like this, you probably don't need any rebar at all. However, you will need to do something else before you pour the concrete. And that will be to put some type of an oil on the inside of the forms. And you can usually do this with a paintbrush. You're just simply going to paint some type of an oil. It can be almost any type of oil. But the one that I used to use the most was a vegetable oil. It's a cooking oil. And it worked great. Just make sure that you put a lot of it on because the more you put on, the easier it's going to be to take this stuff off and not pull the concrete off and ruin your stairway. However, for those of you who do want to install rebar, let me provide you with an easy way to do it. And the first step in this will be to pour a section of concrete about halfway up on the first step. So if our step is seven and a half inches, maybe somewhere between three and four inches. And and then you can simply lay the rebar on top. That way you won't have to hang the rebar with wires and stuff like that. So again, this is an easy way to install rebar in a small stairway like this or any stairway like this. Now the rebar does need to be a minimum of two inches away from the sides and that will include the front and it should be at least three inches away from the soil. And since the porch in our example has a concrete footing, I can run the rebar up against that concrete. And to do this you're simply going to lay one row first and the other row on top and it doesn't matter if you reverse this. And no these don't need to be tied together. However it could be. You could use wire to tie all of this together and then slide this in underneath the riser above here and I don't see a problem with that. But this is a method I've done in a variety of different situations, including when I was building a waterfall in my backyard. And then you're simply going to repeat the process by setting the rebar on top of your next layer of concrete. Now keep in mind that I'm not suggesting that you do this over a two or three day period. You're gonna to wanna to pour this all at once because I don't wanna give you the impression that we're gonna be pouring this in sections, letting one dry, then pouring the next section. We wanna pour it all at once and then strip the forms and finish the concrete. And then for our last step, we can use two pieces of rebar. And I'm using number four rebar here. You could probably use number three rebar if you wanted to. And in this example here, I'm giving you an idea how we filled it up about halfway and then set the rebar in. And last but not least, we will need to fill up the last section of the concrete stairs. In this video, I will be providing you with a couple of methods that might be helpful for anyone who's planning on adding a circular or curved step to a single step like this one here made out of concrete. However, before I do that, let's go ahead and show you how the forms would look if you were going to build a square step like the one I just shown you. And that wouldn't be too difficult. You're just simply going to cut a couple of boards and form them to the outside of what you want the concrete step to look like and then drive some stakes into the ground to hold it in position and for our step it's going to be 36 inches wide by 12 inches deep and then after you have it formed you can simply fill it with concrete and finish it and you're going to be doing the same thing when you are going to form your curved or circular step on either side of the single step and you can do this with a larger piece of scrap lumber. It's not going to be a big deal. However, for our example, I am going to cut a 12 inch by 12 inch square. And then you can place it where it needs to go or just do all of your work right here. But let's go ahead and take a look at it 
in its position so that you can get a pretty good idea what we're doing. Now, if you don't know how to make a circle, now if you don't know how to make a curved section like this on a piece of lumber, I will go ahead and put a link to a video here along with the title of the video for those of you who need more help. And of course, you can change the curves. They don't need to be exactly like this one. And this one here is going to have a 12 inch radius, the same depth as the step. And after we have laid it out we can go ahead and cut it and then put it in place now you might need to drive a couple of stakes into the ground to hold it in place firmly positioned however you will need to be able to remove it before pouring your concrete and in this example I am going to be forming this from the outside and even though I'm not going to be showing you how to do this this isn't going to be that difficult however the next method is probably going to be a little easier and provide you with a more accurate curve but again, I'm giving you two options here. So this one here, you're basically going to be using this as a guide and then forming a flexible piece of material. And there are a lot of building materials that are flexible. You might want to start with eighth inch or quarter inch hardboard or ask your local lumber yard for more information. And in this method, we are going to be attaching the curved board to vertical stakes that we are going to drive into the ground to keep everything firmly secured. Now I also need to point out that you might need to attach the hardboard to the stakes from the inside. Otherwise you could end up with a situation like this where you have nails sticking through or screws sticking through and this isn't going to be a good thing. And another thing, don't forget to oil your forms before you pour concrete. Vegetable oil will do. And what the oil does is allows the board to separate from the concrete a little little easier without doing any damage to the step. And this method right here is what most concrete professionals use. However, it won't always be accurate. However, most people are never going to notice it. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at our second method. And we're going to start with the same board, except this board here is going to need to be a little thicker, three quarters of an inch or larger, because you're going to be attaching screws from the inside into this board. Now, one of the differences between the previous method and this one is that we are going to be starting our circle just a little bit in or the thickness of our material, which the material we're using is a quarter of an inch thick. So the radius of our circle here is going to be 12 and a quarter inches. As you can see here, we're stepping it back just a little bit. And then we are not going to be using the inside on this one. We're going to be using the outside. And we're basically going to create a template. And that template will look something like this. So hopefully not too difficult. We're going to cut two boards like this. This one so that we have one on the bottom and one on the top and then a couple of two by fours to hold everything together and then of course we're going to use our flexible hardboard or whatever material that we have that's going to be flexible to create our curve and here you can see where everything is flowing in and of course the reason why we set this back and made this 12 and a quarter instead of 12 inches to allow for this so this right here is going to provide you with an accurate way to form something like this and in my opinion it's going to be easier for do-it-yourselfers and if you're looking for a curve on both sides you just simply make two of these put one on the right side one on the left side and most of the time something like this can be prefabricated in your garage or your workshop and of course the height of this will need to match the height of your riser also hopefully that was obvious but again I can't take anything for granted here and you would simply use screws like this to go around the outside of the curve. And of course, you will need to use screws or nails to connect the upper and lower boards to your 2x4 blocks also. And if everything goes well, you will have the perfect curve that you can use for your step. And another thing you might be interested in doing to prevent the step from moving will be to drill some holes into the concrete so that you can insert some rebar dowels. And for something like this, you really don't need to use epoxy. And of course, you will need to firmly secure your template to the ground or to the foundation, whatever you're working with, with something like these wood stakes. And of course, you can use double-headed nails or screws. I like to use screws because I can 
pull everything out easier. And here you can see how the curve dies right into the edge there, providing us with a nice circular form. And again, everything needs to be firmly secured so that it doesn't move before you pour your concrete and finish your step. And hopefully by the time you're done, you have something that looks reasonably acceptable to your friends, family, and neighbors. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment area and I will answer them as soon as possible.